Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. I pray that this finds you doing well. Uh, today, I'm in uh, one of our lift rooms here at the Spring Campus. Uh, just wanted to highlight our lift groups and our lift leaders and thank them for just uh, their service and, and everything that they do uh, to really just uh, uh, be the hands and feet, and really be there the ones that, that, that you know, disciple and minister to the, the congregation. You know, uh, they are, are there um, just teaching every Sunday, preparing lessons for every Sunday. And so I just want to thank them uh, for all that they do uh, for the church and the body of believers here at Believers Fellowship uh, and the way they just shepherd the, the, the members of their lift group. If you're not a part of a lift group, uh, I, I can't urge you strong enough to, to really to get plugged into one. Um, if you were in one and you've kind of stepped away, get plugged back into it, you know, get back into a lift group. It's a great time of, of, of fellowship, great time of ministry, great, great time of, of discipleship. Uh, and, and they really do walk along with their brothers and sisters that are a part of that lift group. Uh, I, I know that they're, they're, they have their prayer chains and, and really just uplifting each other uh, in prayer. And, and just, uh, it, it's just a, a great family environment and, and fellowship. Uh, and with that being said, uh, we're starting a new lift group. So if you're worried about, well, I don't want to jump into a lift group mid-study. And, and our lift groups, I don't want to be uh, uh, presumptuous. Our lift groups are, uh, for those that don't know, are living in fellowship together. So those are our small group ministries, uh, Bible study. And they meet at the church at Magnolia and at spring, both before church, after church, summer in the evenings on Sundays. Uh, but, but get plugged into a lift group. But the upcoming lift uh, study for those that don't want to jump in mid study. We're starting a new study uh, the Sunday after Easter, and it's knowing God, and and it's going to take us through uh, May, and it's just uh, going to be a great study, great time, uh, really just drilling into God's Word and knowing and knowing God and who He is, uh, and so just pray about getting plugged into a lift group, um, and 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 so with that being said, uh, today's Wednesday word we're gonna uh, be looking at one sentence in the Bible. Uh, and no, it's not Jesus wept, uh, you know, John eleven thirty five. 35, it's not that. Uh, but before we go any further, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just give you this time, Father. Father, we just pray that you just block out all the distractions, Father, so we can just spend dedicated time with you, Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, we pray, I pray, Father, that this just bless people, Father, and convict people as well as it convicted me, Father. Father, we thank you again for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. So the one sentence that I want to look at is in 1 Thessalonians. So go ahead and open your Bible up to 1 Thessalonians 5. And we're going to be looking at uh, verses 16 through 18. Um, now, that yes, that's three verses, uh, but it's one sentence. Uh, you know, chapters and verses weren't part of the original manuscript. They were added around the 1500s. Um, and, and so it's one sentence that we're going to look at. And, and this is God's word. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, these three verses give characteristics of what a child of God should be constantly doing, rejoicing, being in prayer, being thankful. When I read this sentence, I had, and I had to read it a couple of times, but when I read this sentence, a couple of questions immediately came to mind. How can I rejoice when I'm in a bad spot? How can I rejoice when, when my current situation, you know, it, I, I'm in a bad place physically, mentally, spiritually? The second thing is, what if, what if I just don't want to pray, or if I feel like I can't pray, or I don't want to, I don't know how to pray? What if, and finally, what if there's nothing that I could be thankful for? That right now there's nothing that I, I could be thankful for. You know, those are three, I think, questions that each of us have have kind of gone has has gone have gone through our head in our walk with 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 God and our Christian walk. Those, those questions and those thoughts have, have popped up. Well, let's look at the first verse, verse 16. It says, rejoice always. You know, in the Greek, those words are reversed. And, and so it reads this way. It says, always or uh, at all times. So always or at all times, rejoice. The Bible is clear that rejoicing is a way of life for a child of God. 
Psalms 32, 11 says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, your righteous ones, and shout for joy, all who are upright in heart. Philippians 4, 4, you know, Paul had to say it twice because we don't automatically default to the spirit of joy. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, even when we are being persecuted. Now, do I, I, there are people, there are Christians that are persecuted. You can think of, of our Eastern Christian brothers, you know, the ones in North Korea, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, Somalia, Ethiopia, you know, China, they're being persecuted. They're being martyred for their faith. You know, and, 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 and Western Christians, you know, we, we have it a little bit easier here. You know, we, we can't, you know, sometimes we feel like we're being persecuted because we don't, we, somebody says happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Or, you know, we don't hear the Christmas music loud enough at Home Depot during the holiday season. That's really not being persecuted. But, you know, Christians are persecuted. So Jesus said in Matthew 5, 12, rejoice and be glad your, for your reward in heaven is great. Paul was able to rejoice even when he was worn down and weeping. In 2 Corinthians 6.10, he says, he said this, sorrowful, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Some of us, we, we don't even get to sorrowful. We just get down and we just don't want to rejoice. It's like down and sulking. No, it's sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. So I asked the question, how can I, so, you know, how can I rejoice when I'm in a bad place physically, mentally, spiritually? Well, the thing is, we, we can't ask the question. You know, my answer was don't make it a question. My answer was make it a statement. There is nothing, there is nothing that can happen in my life that will cause me not to rejoice in the Lord. We are commanded to rejoice and to rejoice always, no matter what is going on, no matter how bad things get. It's not conditional. The route to rejoicing begins with a deep down confidence that God is in control of everything. When we're able to rejoice always, we experience joy, joy that is only found in the Lord. In Galatians 5, through 23, Paul lists the fruit of the Spirit. These are the virtues that the Holy Spirit exhibits in every Christian. And guess what? Joy is one of them. If we allow our emotions to control us, we will miss it. We need to, we need to focus on the faithfulness of God to allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. Here is how we can experience joy and always rejoice. Focus on the promises of God. Jesus is coming back. And if you know him, you will be with him in heaven. For uh, 10, uh, Luke 10, 20 says this, rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Stay close to Christ. Psalm 16, 11, in your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there is pleasure for forever. Be in the word of God daily. Jeremiah 15, 16, and your words become for, became for me a joy and the delight of my heart. Spend time with joyful brothers, be believers. Be, spend time with, with those that, that, that experience that same joyfulness, that, that's, that always rejoice. When we refer to a friend, Paul wrote in Philemon 1.7, For I have come to, to have much joy and comfort in your love, because the hearts of the saints that have been refreshed, refreshed through you, brother. Share the gospel with people. 1 Thessalonians 2.19, Paul called the new believers his joy. Sing praises of joy to God. Psalm 71, 23. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. Let's look at the second verse, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. This is simple and very specific. We are called to pray as a way of life. Just as we breathe, we should be praying. The word prayer here, it really encompasses all things, thanksgiving, confession, praise, intercession for others, personal requests, requests for, for, to God. The word continually refers to something that is constantly re reoccurring, something that we are co consistently doing. Prayer is like a long conversation with God that just doesn't end. You just pick up where you left off. We should always be praying. Luke 18, 1 says that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. There are some steps to make prayer part of your day. Schedule a, a set time to pray, be it in the morning, be it in the afternoon or the evening. Just set a time to spend dedicated time before the Lord and just lift those petitions up to him. Pray with others over the phone, over Zoom. 
over text. Offer to offer to pray when someone shares a burden with you. Pray in your car when you're driving. Now keep your eyes open, but definitely pray when you're driving. When you're stuck in tra- you know, uh, traffic, or just at the light, pray. Join others in prayer, especially at our upcoming Easter prayer meeting uh, on the 24th. So next Wednesday, March 24th, we're going to be having a, an Easter prayer meeting at seven o'clock at both campuses. You want to be a part of that. We're going to be lifting up, you know, our the, our pastors, our members, those that will be guests, our, our ensemble, our music groups, uh, our, our salt teams, that's the sound and lighting teams, you know, our ushers, our greeters. Just, we're going to be lifting up every aspect of our Easter service. And so you want to be a part of that. Uh, again, that's next Wednesday, March 24th at 7 p.m. at both campuses. Write out your prayers in a notebook and then lift those prayers up to the Lord. Pray for what you see and hear. We're to rejoice. So just to recap, we're to rejoice always. And, and, and constantly and continually be in prayer, to pray without ceasing. Let's look at verse 18. In everything, give thanks. That's, you know, if you thought the first one was hard, be, you know, rejoice always. You thought the second one was bad, was, was difficult, you know, be in prayer. This third one, wow. In everything, give thanks. This is not telling us to give thanks when things are going our way. Or when things are, you know, on the uptick, I mean, that's easy, right? Who doesn't give thanks for that? We are to give thanks in everything, in all our circumstances, even if they stink, even if they just aren't good. We're to rejoice, we're to give thanks in everything. When things happen in our lives that we don't understand, we thank God. When things happen in our lives that that just weren't what we planned, we thank God. Because he is in control. That is definitely a learned response. It's something that we must constantly remind ourselves. In the book, in, in the book, The Hiding Place, Corey Ten Boom shares a story about thankfulness. She and her sister Betsy uh, were prisoners of the Nazis, and they had just been transferred to one of the worst prison camps they had ever been in. The barracks were extremely overcrowded and infested with fleas. Their scripture reading for, for that they that they smuggled in with their Bible uh, that morning was 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen. Rejoice always, you know. Be uh, 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 pray, you know. Pray unceasingly and in everything give thanks. So that was their Bible straight of the scripture reading for that day. Bet- Betsy told Corey to stop and thank the Lord for every detail of their new living quarters. How do you thank God for being in a Nazi concentration camp? How do you thank God for being in an overcrowded barrack barracks? How do you thank God for being in, 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 a, in an area that is infested with fleas? At first, Cora refused to, to, to give thanks for the fleas. But Betsy continued to remind her and everything give thanks. They finally agreed to thank God for even the fleas. During the months they spent at the camp, they were surprised how openly they, they could just hold their Bible studies and, and prayer meetings without interference from the guards. Several months later, they learned that the officers would not enter the barracks because there were too many fleas. So thank God for the fleas. It's because of the fleas that they were able to share God's word, to study God's word and not be uh, uh, interrupted by the guards that were guarding them because the guards were scared, afraid to go in to the flea-infested barracks. You know, so are you giving thanks in all your circumstances? You can tell how well you're doing this uh, in the, by listening to how much complaining you're doing. Think about that. You could tell you could tell how well you're 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 giving thanks to God by how much complaining you're doing. If you're doing a lot of complaining, you're not doing a lot of thank, thanking God. If you're doing a lot of thanking God, then you're doing less complaining. So when you're tempted to complain, be reminded in everything give thanks. I bet you'll be surprised by what happens. 
when Daniel got some bad news, uh, listen to what he did in Daniel 6.10. He continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had been doing previously. No matter how bad things look, give thanks. By giving thanks, when we do not feel it, we are proclaiming that God's wisdom is greater than ours. Amen. Let's look at that last verse, the, the 18b. And it says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So if someone asks you or, or, or you were wondering what the will of God is for your life, there's three specific commands, three specific things right there that, that, that is God's will for your life. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in everything. That is the will of God for you if you are a child of God. Amen? Well, amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for, you know, that was really, that devotion was really more for me. And I just want to thank you for being a part uh, of that, of that because I was truly convicted of, the, of, of this devotion, that I need to spend more time rejoicing, more time in prayer, and more time giving God thanks for everything that is, that's happening in my life. Sometimes we lose sight of that because of, of the daily goings on and, and the highs and lows of our day. But ultimately, it is, it is the will of God for, for our lives to constantly be you know, rejoicing, being in prayer and giving thanks to him because his goal for our life far, far just, it, it blows my wants out of, out of the water, his will for my life. Uh, and I thank God for that uh, because I will definitely short, short change myself with my wants compared to his will for me. Amen. So uh, Mar uh, Easter's coming up. We're having two services at, at both our locations uh, at, at Spring and Magnolia. Both of them will be at 9 and 1045. And so I want to encourage you to, to come out, invite your neighbors, invite your friends, invite your family, invite strangers. And the way we invite strangers is by just sharing the God, sharing with them, just talking to them, you know, sparking a conversation at the grocery store. And also by handing out these Easter invite cards. You saw these on Sunday. Uh, they were in, on the altars at both campuses and also in the front foyer. Uh, they're going to be there again this Sunday. And, and so they'll pick them up, pray over them and pray for people to, for God to put people in your path to share them with. Uh, I, you know, it's going to be a great time of the Lord uh, because it's Easter. Uh, amen. And, and what it what it represents for our eternity. And, and thank God for that. And, and so I can't wait to see you on Easter and also our Easter prayer meeting next Wednesday, March 24th uh, at the spring campus this Sunday. Uh, so the 20, March 21st, uh, this Sunday, immediately following church at the spring campus, our clothing pantry is going to have Easter clothes in the fellowship hall. And, and so uh, you families can go and shop and, and pick out clothes for their kids for the for Easter. Uh, they'll, she'll have e uh, the ladies will have Easter dresses and, and, and Easter suits for the boys and, and Easter dresses for the girls. And, and so you, you if you're looking for clo Easter clothes and don't really want to spend a lot of money because it's a one time wear um, at the spring campus immediately after ch after service. Uh, in the fellowship hall, our clothing pantry will be hosting um, an Easter uh, clothing distribution day, uh, for lack of a better phrase there. Uh, and so uh, let, you know, they just want to be a blessing to, to families. And so can't wait to see you on Sunday. God bless.